why the Hack Nation listens to us across the great state of Iowa, because it's not just all about elitist golf, unless we have someone like this on. So please raise the bar for this next 10 minutes, both of you, as Kelly Tillman from the Golf Channel is kind enough to join us in the middle of our spat. Good evening, Kelly. Thank you very much for joining us on the tee uh, this Wednesday night. What am I walking into, guys? Good uh, to be with you. Oh, uh, you don't want to know, dear. The rest of the guys can tell you that we, we have weekly squabbles. The name of the show is On the Tee, Two Pros and the Hack. I am the resident hack, and most of our audience uh, is the Hack Nation. And I guess the number one question they'd ask you, if they were in your hometown, the Hack Nation, it has to be the hamburger heaven, isn't it, to eat? Yeah, <laughs> it certainly is. It's uh, located just a couple blocks from my mom's house, and it's just, it's uh, it's a great little spot. If you ever had a burger there, if you haven't, you definitely need to have one. Well, as I was going through some history, I, I, I really enjoyed the little piece they had on bunker travel, Myrtle Beach, uh, a few weeks ago. In golf world on you and and and, and at that time I, you know I, I knew you'd grown up in the golf business but i didn't realize what a cool name of your family's golf course back in the day gator hole was the name of it yeah and there literally was a gator on the 18th hole and that was as simple as that is how they named it hilarious i was about eight years old when um the golf course was being built i watched it um dredged up from from ground zero basically and it was just amazing to see the progress, and I remember most of it, even though I was really young, riding around with my dad in, in a Jeep and looking at all the, the dirt turned into beautiful turf, and I spent the better part of 20 years uh, practicing there and playing golf. Well, Kelly, uh, this last week, you know, getting ready for the uh, the big announcement of the Ryder Cup here in the, here in the state of Iowa, I mean, we were glued to the Golf Channel, waiting for uh, Captain Pavin. We were really hoping he was going to say Zach Johnson, but uh, we weren't for sure. But we couldn't be happier to have Zach back on that Ryder Cup team and representing the the good old U.S. of A. Yeah, I, I saw he was uh, playing for Tom Lehman back in uh, 2006. He didn't he didn't bring home a winning record, but still. Um, I think Lehman was very impressed with what he brought to the team, and of course Lehman is a vice captain now and a contributor to Corey Pavin certainly uh, had a lot of say in that, I'm sure. And um, I, I just think this is a really, really good team uh, in so many ways, and camaraderie leads the way. A lot of good guys on this golf on this uh, Ryder Cup team. Well, absolutely. And you know, getting back a little bit to Zach, one thing you know, he in the singles match that year uh, you know, in Ireland, he plays Darren Clark, and and you know that was not too long after his wife had passed away and and, and uh, you know Zach had his hands full that day so yeah he, he didn't he didn't play on a winning team but he certainly played on that team yeah not a lot of Americans these days can say they have played on a winning team that's just kind of the, the way it is lately I think Europe's claimed eight of the last 12 Ryder Cups uh, but uh, with that said they do hold the cup they did win it at home uh, last time and I think they carry a lot of confidence going into this one and you know I think because there's been question marks surrounding Tiger and his his play and his dedication to the Ryder Cup, which actually baffles him because he feels like he is dedicated, or at least says he is dedicated, uh, but others question it. They won this one without Tiger last time, so having him there is only a bonus in their eyes, I'm sure of it. You know, Kelly, you mentioned something about the camaraderie of this team. I, that's one thing. I've been a former college coach, and seeing a lot of these young guys, I really kind of, I, I feel like that's been some of the strength of the European teams in the past was all their tightness and how they grew up together playing. And I look at guys like Bubba Watson and Dustin Johnson, Overton, Kuchar, uh, you know, Ricky Fowler. They grew up playing a lot of these junior stuff together. And I, I agree with you. I think there is a lot of camaraderie on this team. Yeah, it's a, it's a much younger team, too. Um, I think there's five guys in their 20s on this team. Um, Europe doesn't have as many, but, you know, they're, they're welcoming a few 20-somethings as well. And a couple of them are major champs, but uh, I, I just I think you're right. I think the U.S. golf is going through a, a transformation, and I won't call it a passing of the torch yet because Phil and Tiger still have a lot of game left. But um, we're certainly in a transition state where the young guys are gaining confidence against them, and uh, they bring a new flair to the game. So I I really love where it's at right now. I do. You're listening to On the Tee on the Iowa Sports Connection Radio Network. Conversation with Kelly Tillman from the Golf Channel, former Duke standout in golf, played uh, across the pond uh, in uh, Europe, Asia, and Australia. Came to the Golf Channel. This is the statistic that astonishes me, and, and, and uh, you're still young. I'm old. I've been watching you on the Golf Channel since 1997, and uh, you were the first play-by-play uh, on the course, uh, and, and, and just a tremendous accomplishment there. But uh, that, doesn't it seem just like yesterday when you started at the Golf Channel? 
Oh, man, I wish I could say that. I've been there, what, geez, 14 years now. Um, longest relationship I've ever had. <laughs> <laughs> and certainly the most successful one at this point. But um, I, I have thoroughly enjoyed it. People over, over the years have said, uh, have you ever thought about leaving Golf Channel? Why haven't you left Golf Channel? And uh, I've always had just one answer, and that is every time I think I might have learned everything I possibly could there, they break through another gra- uh, glass ceiling and new ground, and I get to come with them. And I've just been real grateful for the fact that the Golf Channel has just grown exponentially over the years. When I first started there in 90, 96, 97, like you mentioned, um, we were in 100,000 homes, and we are in 83 million now and growing, so it's great. Well, you know, one of the things, like tonight I watched you before uh, we came into our studio, and, and the way the set just keeps uh, evolving, and, and today, you know, it was very interactive. You went out and took Alex Maselli, and, and he did his picks, and uh, by the way, I don't know if you were aware of this, but we have Alex on quite often. He went to Drake for two years, uh, and, and, and there's that little bond with us in Iowa, as well as with uh, Zach Johnson, but the way that that, that set was, has been evolving, the, the interactive elements, uh, it's been very, very impressive. Yeah, and I'm just glad to hear that Alex went to college because, you know me, I love to give him grief. So I didn't think he actually went to college, but it's good to know that he went. It's good for young kids to hear that. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, if he can pick football games like he's been picking uh, uh, his successful uh, weekly, I would certainly uh, like him to go to Vegas with me and pick football yeah, games on a weekly he, basis. He started out kind of slow. He was dragging this year, but he's come on strong here as of late. So, uh, yeah, you know, it's, it's, it's fun to, to – Messed around with Alex. Uh, he kind of knew him before he became the stat man, so to speak. Uh, and when he was cast for that role on the uh, the old show called The Approach, it seemed a perfect fit with the mustache and the bow tie. And, man, did he assume the role. And he has played it beautifully over the years. Uh, Alex, uh, don't let him fool you. You know, he, he gets goofy from time to time. But, you know, he, he's, um, he's a talented guy, and uh, he's very passionate about what he does. Well, we're going to have to uh, take some take some pointers from you because every time he comes on the show, I feel like he yells at us for five minutes, and 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 I don't know what to do. I feel like I'm in uh, science class in tenth grade again. Yeah, my jo- my job or my goal really is to uh, tone him down. It's really hard to do. It's it's a work in progress. I figure it'll take me another fourteen years. Um, that'll be by my twenty eighth year at the golf channel. I'll have it done down pat. Well, in 14 years, I know you, you you probably get asked this, but and, and, and I'm certain you can't pin anything specific down. Now, uh, one of the highlights, I, I'm sure, and, and and a lot of people in the golf world were very impressed when you did those one-on-one interviews with Tiger Woods, or how comfortable he was with you and opened up to you. Uh, 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 I think that was a couple of years ago. I saw the twinkle in the king's eye when uh, when you were talking to him just recently because you know he was one of the guys behind the Golf Channel. And uh, I could see that you you have a bit of a a, a special relationship with him, and, and he's he's such a special individual. Uh, I've been fortunate enough to meet him a couple of times. He makes everybody feel unique. But those are two guys I bet uh, you really have enjoyed uh, developing a relationship with over the years. Yeah, um, thank you for saying those things. Um, I I really have um, had a great opportunity through this job. I don't know if it would have come any other way uh, to to get closer to those two guys and a number of players over the years. I consider Annika Sorensen to be a a very good friend of mine. Um, We have a lot of history as well that came before Golf Channel but was nurtured um, by my experience here at Golf Channel. And, um, you know, I I know that Tiger has been through a lot, but I also know that this is a guy with a lot of great qualities, and he has made some some serious mistakes and um, is trying to atone for them. He just has to do it in such an awkward way. He is our real-life Truman Show, uh, if you remember the movie with Jim Carrey. I mean, this, this is the guy that every move is tracked on camera or, you know, through some sort of uh, media form. And um, I don't envy that about him, uh, but I can tell you that of all the players I've ever spent time with, he is as real as the next guy when the cameras aren't rolling. Um, he's got a great sense of humor, uh, you know, great joke teller, uh, really loves to give you a hard time. And also, when you're with him, he asks you questions about you. You know, there's been a number of players over the years that when I get within the vicinity of them, we end up talking about them the whole time. But uh, he always makes sure to ask me how I'm doing, um, and I appreciate that. And I will say the same thing about Arnold Palmer. You said it. He makes you feel unique. He has that way of engaging you uh, with with a warm aura that makes you feel like he genuinely cares about that moment. And um, I, I don't know why Arnold and I have hit it off over the years that we have. Um, I was just blown away when 
I was able to get the caddy gig with him. And just for the record, you know, we kind of recruited that first gig with Arnold, and he let me do it. Um, we did it through our company and the relationships there. But then beyond that, the next two times I did it at the Masters Caddy and Foreman, the part three I'm, I'm talking about, um, it, it was his call. And he just, we had a good time. And it was great to have him ask me to come back on the bag. And, and he has extended for me to do it again, so I hope to do it again with him here in the near future. I just I just think he's the greatest guy in the world. Excuse me, i got a dog in the background. That's, that's my boy, Jackson. Uh, uh, is, is that right? Because uh, when we talked to Inga Hammond on the air, her dog's names were... Um, uh-huh. Her and Phil. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I thought maybe you have a little golf theme there with uh, with, with your dog's name. Hey, uh, like I said, Golf Channel is the best relationship I've ever had, but I try not to take my work home with me like Inga has. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, one one last thing, uh, you know, looking at, uh, at, at at your history, growing up with your four brothers, your mother's still alive. Uh, you grew up in the golf business, uh, and they and they run these reruns all the time. You probably watched Caddyshack many times and brought a lot of memories of of your of your life growing up at Gator Hole, huh? Yeah, it sure does. You know, my uncle was actually the superintendent there. This was a very big family affair, and he was the king of Goonga Lagoonga. I mean, he loved Child's <laughs> Cycle. It's hilarious, and he, you know, to this day, we're still good friends. I'm going to have dinner with him tomorrow night, uh, and we always have the Caddyshack, uh, you know, speech impediment in our uh, in our little conversations back and forth. It's a staple in my household, that's for sure. And I think I've probably seen it about a hundred times. Well, we do a, uh, a giveaway, and we'll do it next. Uh, and we'll use Caddyshack uh, for our entire Hack Nation. We appreciate you <laughs> taking time to join us. It's been a, a pleasure. So, Surf Golf and Beach Club, that's your recommendation down there. And you then got it. That's for our serious golfers. And then for us hacks, we want to head over to the Hamburger Heaven, right? Uh, definitely. I'd, I'd say both. They're only about uh, uh, about a mile apart, Surf Club and Hamburger Heaven. Not, you can, literally, you can walk from one to the other. You've got to make it a double dip. Well, our Hack Nation probably need to walk if they've been over to the Hamburger Heaven. <laughs> Kelly Tillman, thank you very much. I know it's a very busy week for you, a very busy time. Uh, it's, it's been a special interview, and thanks for coming and joining us on the tee. It's a pleasure, guys. Thanks for having me in the Hack Nation. I appreciate it. All right. Have a good night. Kelly Tillman, and uh, yeah. yeah. I knew that uh, if you look at this, the history, she said she did it all uh, at her family's uh, golf course, uh, Gator Hole. Well, you, you got to figure TD's been, Tim Dare has been to those two places. I mean, he's been to Myrtle Beach many, many times. I can tell you, I'm going to those two places now. You well, gotta, you you're going to go to Myrtle Beach because that means you're going to have to play golf. <laughs> I'm going to go, and I'm going to play golf. And I'll, and, are you and, going? And, and, where are you going? You go, you're taking your lovely bride, or are you going on a golf course. trip? I was just given a timeshare down there by my father, so I have no option now. I got seven days. I just got it last week. So. I got I got some free time. I'll go ahead and come down there with you. Well, then I have to golf a lot. <laughs> We're going to be back, and we'll make it a Caddyshack theme here uh, in honor of Kelly Tillman, kind enough to join us here on the tee on the Iowa Sports Connection Radio Network.